Good morning. Good morning. Are you all done? You haven't finished your milk. Go finish your milk. Good morning, everybody. It's September 11. Everybody knows what that means, right? And we were just recounting, recounting at, at breakfast today how uh, on September 11, 20, sorry, yeah, 2001, uh, Bonnet and I were awakened by the bombing of, uh, or the crashing of the second plane on the second tower of the World Trade Center. <clears throat> huh? Sorry? I don't understand. What's that, Joe? Yeah, 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 of course. Well, somebody woke us up. <laughs> somebody in the house woke us up saying, Ah, you gotta, you gotta watch TV. The World Trade Center was bombed. <clears throat> so anyway, <clears throat> we got to witness live how how that second tower, um, uh, how that plane, rather, crashed into that second tower. Okay, so, oh, what's that? So anyway, this is very significant to us and also because um, it was the day after uh, Grandpa Jacob arrived uh, to the U.S. Uh, on a month-long vacation. Uh oh, God bless you. On a month-long vacation after the death of Grandma Aleli. Right? So Grandma Aleli died on August 9 on Grandpa Jacob's birthday. And so I thought, after all the funeral and everything else was over and done with, um, Grandpa deserved a vacation. So he came to the U.S. and uh, spent about a month with us uh, vacationing. Also because we were uh, not quite fortunate to be able to go home uh, to be with Grandma uh, at the time that she died. So Grandpa thought it would be best to uh, come to us and uh, be with us for about a month. <clears throat> so it was around this time, September 11. <clears throat> okay. So anyway, today we're going to comment on the gospel coming from St. Luke chapter 6 verses 39 to 42. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? Then he goes on to say, No disciple is superior to the teacher. But when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own. Of course, there's a juxtaposition, uh, positioning of uh, different things in this gospel reading. Okay, uh, one is he was telling a parable about the blind leading the blind, and then uh, comes in with these uh, very graphic. Uh, questioning right, of the splinter in the beam. Very graphic uh, uh, descriptions of something that's impeding your normal eyesight. Right? Imagine having a beam stuck in your eye. That is a big impediment an obstacle to being able to see things with clarity, right? But our Lord uses these image in order to show us that many of us are like that. That we tend to be trying to pinpoint the mistakes of others, trying to guide the others who have impediments themselves, not physically, but spiritual impediments in their lives, yet we ourselves are blinded 
So it's like the blind leading the blind, right? It's like, uh, you do as I tell you, but don't follow my bad example, right? <laughs> so, why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye? It's so easy for us to notice the defects of others. That's what our Lord is saying here. It's so easy for us to tell that others have defects. Yet we ourselves, we cannot notice our own defects. We are blind to our own shortcomings and our own sinfulness. Okay? This is a human tendency. All of us fall into this kind of a trap of the devil. Where we are blinded to our own uh, uh, mistakes, our own shortcomings, our own defects, our own sins. Our Lord continues, How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? <laughs> right? You have a big beam in your own eye. How can you uh, even do anything with a splinter, a small sliver of wood in the eye of your brother. Our Lord is telling us, you know, many times we have more sins, we have more defects, we have more problems than what we notice in other people. But why is it that we notice their problems and we are not aware of our own? How can that happen? How can that happen? And our Lord says, here's the answer of how that can happen. You hypocrite! <laughs> okay? You hypocrite! Remove the wooden beam from your eye first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. Our Lord gives us the answer. You are being a hypocrite. If you are quick to pinpoint the defects of your brother, you're quick to notice what's wrong with other people, but you hardly notice what's wrong with you. You hardly even pay attention <clears throat> to your own defects. We are very quick to excuse our own defects we're very we're very fast in, in in making excuses for every wrong thing we do yet we're very quick to notice hey, hey, hey why did you do that oh you're not supposed to do that hey don't do this hey why uh, 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 uh. right we are very quick to notice the wrong things being done by others especially those that are near us like our own family like our own brothers and sisters, like our own parents. We're very quick at pinpointing what's wrong with them. But we always give excuses for our own defects. There's always a reason why we do the wrong things we do, right? Oh, you know, it's not really my fault. It's because it's like this. And because of that person, because... My brother, because my sister did this to me. Oh, you know, I forgot. Oh, because. Or because. Because we always have plenty of excuses. What does our Lord say? You hypocrite. What does that mean? You hypocrite. It means you're not being sincere. That's what hypocrisy is. You are not being sincere. You are not being truthful. You are lying to yourself. And that is why you would hear me many times, right? You hear me many times asking you, who are you fooling? <laughs> right? Right? You hear me ask that question many times. Who are you fooling when you tell a lie? Who are you, who, who are you, who are you fooling when you are not sincere with yourself and when you try to give excuses for your wrongdoings, who are you fooling? You cannot fool God, 
neither can you fool Papa. You know, you get caught many times, right? You get caught many times when you do the wrong thing, when you disobey the rules, when you when you do all sorts of stupid things. You get caught, right? You get caught. Because you can always try to run away from responsibility, but you cannot hide forever. In the first place, we cannot hide from God. God is always watching us. God always knows where we are, what we're doing, no matter how secretive we try to, <laughs> we try to hide it. God always knows what's going on with us, right? We cannot hide. We cannot hide. We cannot hide. So let us stop being hypocrites. Let us stop being insincere with ourselves. And how is this? How can we work this out? How are we going to help ourselves? Well, you know what? We have a very, very important mechanism for, for checking on ourselves for checking on our sincerity, for checking our defects and whether we acknowledge them or not. We have a very important tool and mechanism which we, in our family, do every day. And what is that? Ah, mommy is correct. Right? The examination of conscience. The examination of conscience every night. Eh? The examination of conscience every night before we go to bed at the end of the day, you know, just for you folks who are listening to us right now, we have this uh, habit which is part of our own schedule at home, which is we, we, we gather as a family before we go to bed. Eh? At the end of the day, we gather as a family and we do an examination of conscience together. We examine our conscience, we examine our day, how we had behaved throughout the day, what we did good and what we did wrong. And then we make resolutions for doing better the following day. Okay? And then we repent for our sins and our wrongdoings for that day and we end it with the recitation of the um, act of contrition. Okay? This is what we do in our household every day. And I would encourage every family to do the same thing. You know, it's, it's a very, very nice habit. And you know what? Uh, this, this matter of examination of conscience, which we apply to our personal spiritual lives, you know, this is a practice. This is a common practice, even among non-Catholics and the most pagan of endeavors, right? Uh, just look at how companies operate. You have some kind of a, uh, a, a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly kind of accounting and reckoning that you do. You know, accounting. There you go, Sophia. You want to be an accountant. Accounting is something you do every day. You tend to take note of your debit and credit, right? What you spent on, what you saved that day, how much you made money that day, what you had to spend on that day, okay? And you do this on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a yearly basis before you pay your taxes, you do the same thing. So even in the, in, in the world of business, even in the world of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, 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 daily affairs, okay, you do some kind of accounting and reckoning. Okay? Just like when you do, go, do the grocery every week, you do the same thing, right? How much more sugar do we have? How much more rice do we have? How much of this are we going to buy? How, you do an accounting all the time. This is what you call, <laughs> you know, a form of examination. Oh yeah, talking of examination. What do you do when you do tests in school? The same thing. You're actually being tested about how much you know, right? It's an, that's why it's called an examination. How much do you know of the lessons you studied? So our examination of conscience at night, applying the same concept of examination and accounting and reckoning in our personal lives, it's exactly what we do. We try to do an accounting of the good things that we did 
versus the bad things that we did. We try to do a measurement of how much virtue we gained that day and how we practice the virtues that day versus the failures in our virtues that day. Now, but to make all of these things work, we need to be sincere. Okay? The virtue of sincerity is what we need to make this thing work. It's just the same way with other things. When you do a grocery shopping list for the week, you have to be sincere in counting, okay, uh, how much rice we have, how many, how many uh, sacks of uh, or bags of rice we have, how much more butter you have in the fridge, how much more eggs you have. If you're not sincere and you fool yourself and you say, oh, you know what, we have plenty more eggs. Don't worry about it. I think we have plenty of eggs. And then you go to the grocery without counting how many dozens of eggs you have in, the, uh, in your kitchen in stock. And when you come home, without having done the correct reckoning, you come home and say, uh-oh, we ran out. Well, whose fault was that? <laughs> okay? It's because you were not sincere in doing your accounting and reckoning of what exactly your inventory was in the kitchen. Right? Now, the same thing can happen anywhere. If you were an accountant in a company or you're, a, you're an entrepreneur, you own a business, you have to do a sincere and accurate and truthful accounting of your resources. Otherwise, how can you operate a business on the basis of not knowing what you have and what you don't have? Right? So you apply the same concept to your spiritual life. You also have to take stock, okay? and an inventory, and a good examination of your virtues and your defects. And you have to be able to render an account before God, sincerely telling God that I think I have these virtues, I think I have gained uh, in this particular virtue, in that other virtue, and I'm improving in this matter, and I am still deficient in this other virtue, in that other uh, sin that I could not root out, in that other uh, uh, difficulty I'm having, that challenge there spiritually that I am having, I'm still having a hard time with that. Okay? You have to be truthful. You have to be sincere with yourself. Otherwise, who are you fooling? Okay? So when you sit down there and do the examination of conscience every night, there has to be a sincere effort to really do a good reckoning, a good accounting of your day. And don't just sit there and pretend like you were thinking and praying about it when really in reality you might be just distracted. You might just be uh, wrapped up in your own imagination. You may just be pretending you're doing anything, right? But you're really idle. Your mind is really blank. There's really nothing going on. For those three to five minutes that you're sitting there. See? Well, if that's the way we do things. Then there's no wonder. No wonder we do not improve. Okay? No wonder we do not improve. So, in order to... In order to really uh, have real improvement in our lives, we have to do our examination of conscience every night very sincerely, truthfully, intently. Okay? Intently. Let us not waste the five minutes that we are sitting there pretending to examine ourselves. Okay? And it's a very good habit. Every person, every family who, is, who, who, who wants to grow in virtue, to grow in sanctity, this habit of doing the examination of conscience is a very, very important mechanism to include in one's interior life, in one's 
in one's life every day. Okay? If we can do this for business, if we can do this for work, if we can do this for grocery shopping, we should be able to do it for our own personal sanctity. And mind you, folks, there are plenty of books available. Plenty of books, even on Amazon. There's so many of books you can read up about examination of conscience. Okay? And there are plenty of uh, 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 little, little pamphlets, little manuals that help you uh, uh, ask yourself uh, different questions that will uh, help you examine yourselves. And it's also a very good habit you can use before you go to confession. Okay? So avail of these tools, avail of these little books, these little pamphlets that are around you. You have them on Amazon, and I suppose you can pick them up also in some religious bookstores, you know, on the examination of conscience and how to do a good examination of conscience. I recommend it. I hope we pick it up as a habit. But let's do it sincerely, really sincerely, truthfully, without fear, without any uh, um, pretensions. Otherwise, we're wasting our time. So let's do our examination of conscience sincerely every day. Okay. That's it for us, folks. I hope you have a, a good rest of your day and have a good weekend ahead of you. Hope to see you again on Monday. Bye. Bye. Bye, Eva. Bye-bye, <laughs> Eva. <laughs> you want to say goodbye, Eva? Bye. There. Say goodbye, Eva. Bye. Bye. <laughs> nice smile. Okay. Let's go. Bye-bye.